Hey guys, this is Julian, and I'm going to draw my life for you today. I was born in Northern California at the Stanford University Hospital. I had one sibling when I was born, my older sister, Roxanne. My mom and dad were there with my sister, Roxanne, and I think my grandparents were there too, I'm not sure. Uh, but Roxanne is my big sister, she was there. Once I was born, my family moved from, well, New York and then Northern California down to Los Angeles. I've lived in Los Angeles my entire life. When I was a kid, I got into baseball really seriously. Uh, I would play all the time. That's me and my little brother, Marlon. Uh, one time he got a ball to the nose and he broke it. But we play baseball all the time. That's kind of what I grew up doing. In elementary school, kind of just was a little riot. I ran around all the time and I was really weird. I guess everyone kind of is at that age. But my mom and dad split up around that time when I was in the, around the first grade. And my mom met someone named uh, Ted, my baseball coach at the time. And uh, he was the father of one of my friends in class. But my mom and Ted started dating. Getting adjusted to Ted and the new step family wasn't easy, but at the same time, so many kids go through it. It's, I mean, it's nothing new. Ted was my coach, so it was a little different because I had known him before my mom even knew him. But Ted had three kids, Josh, Jake, and Jessica. And Josh and I had known each other from class and baseball. We would always play together. So we were friends. Once the two families, Jake, Jessica, and Josh started hanging out with me, my brother, and my sister, which is Marlon and Roxanne, we would go on trips together. We would spend all of our time together because the two families had, I guess unofficially, but also officially merged. For the most part, we spent a good amount of our childhood together going to different places like New York. We would go on family car rides long trips to different places but my mom had this really goofy giant white van like a little family bus that we took around places we went to Yosemite Falls we just kind of went on a lot of road trips we called it the um, Brady Bunch because there were so many kids oh, we did get in our fair share of fights I remember this one time we were at a family reunion or one of our relatives birthday parties I can't remember uh, just a bunch of family everywhere and I was playing catch out in the back it was like on a ranch and Josh my older stepbrother came up behind me and slapped the ball out of my hand while I was trying to throw so I turned around without even looking and punched him right in the face that's just kind of one of the times that sticks out in my mind that we fought I remember after I punched him my punishment was to sit in the car while everyone else had fun at the party and I just had to watch while everyone kept having fun that kind of sucked. When I got into high school, I immediately found my calling as being part of uh, the baseball team. It's really where I found my identity and it's where I got serious about playing baseball. I remember my freshman year, I was assigned to play catcher and I just loved it so much. I, I was involved in every single play and I had power and a lot of people relied on me and it became something that I took really seriously. I started to switch hit which uh, a lot of catchers do. And I started to think about possibly playing, you know, baseball competitively later on in my life, you know, in college and stuff. It was tough because when I was an underclassman, I really just, I got so into it and I really wanted to play and, and be the best and, you know, make varsity. But I got a, a lot of shit from other, some of the older players. I think they were threatened by me because I really wanted to work hard and I wanted to play. And it was really cool to just kind of relax. I got a lot of shit for it, but I didn't care. I really just wanted to play and work hard. And I think baseball was one of the things that really developed my personality and my work ethic. It, it really taught me how to achieve and how to grab something if you want it and work for it. I was a captain my senior year. When I was a sophomore, I uh, was diagnosed with celiac disease and uh, I couldn't eat any more wheat, which uh, at the time, which was 2008, uh, it wasn't that easy. I lost a lot of weight and uh, I didn't know what to eat. There weren't that many options out there, but I figured it out. I discovered I could eat sushi, so I gained the weight back, which was good. When uh, I got to be a senior and I had to decide what college I was going to go to, it was hard. I had planned to go to a junior college with my buddy Andrew. He was my best friend and we were going to go play baseball together. Um, but then I suddenly got off the waiting list and got accepted into Chapman University. I had hoped to, I would get into and when I finally did, I felt really bad having to bail on my friend, but I chose Chapman. The plan was to play baseball at Chapman it sucks because the moment I started playing baseball at Chapman, I injured myself. I hurt my back really bad training with the team, and uh, I couldn't do anything. I was laying in my dorm all day for a good, good majority of my freshman year, not knowing how to deal with life. It was so hard for me because everything I had ever done revolved around baseball, and it was kind of just a big part of my identity. So not being able to play or do anything physical for the vast majority of my freshman year sucked. I got an x-ray uh, from the doctor. They said I had fractured a vertebrae and it was called spondylolysis, which it was just a small crack, but 
all the twisting motions in baseball really just kind of aggravated it so I couldn't play baseball anymore it was really hard I I didn't know what to do it was, it was a tough point in my life and I ultimately had to give baseball up which was one of the hardest decisions I've ever had to make but having made it you know in hindsight I knew I had to do it so it was hard all right last sad thing it was just this summer after I had stopped playing baseball when my brother Marlon started to get sick he was coughing a little bit and then one day he really couldn't walk he fell down I remember and it was a weird sickness his muscles actually feed we couldn't understand what was going on so at one point it was after the day he fell out of bed we took him to the ER and we found out that he had a really bad disease called Guillain-Barre syndrome and the syndrome is uh, basically just it attacks your body he didn't have any control over his body his body was eating away at itself and he had to be put on uh, IVIG which was a, a treatment similar to chemotherapy he lost about 25 pounds just from the treatment and it was really really hard to watch but one of the things that I remember the most out of this whole experience was how my brother Marlon who was having this happen to him was just smiling the whole time and I, I was always confused at how he could be that okay during such a time like this like I remember our family got a call from family friends saying we send our thoughts and prayers and I always was so puzzled by that because that was something to me that you said to a family who had lost someone so to hear that was incredibly discouraging but he had such a great attitude that I'm I'm convinced was a huge reason why he got through it the way he did and now he's as strong as ever and I'm proud to call him my brother summer after my sophomore year I got a job working at a radio station called amp radio in Los Angeles and uh, I still went to Chapman so I would commute on the weekends uh, by train and bike to come work in amp radio and I really loved it uh, and what was great is that I also started bartending uh, so I would go during the day on the weekend to work in amp radio all day and then when it came to nighttime, I would go to the bar I worked at, which was called South, and I would bartend. So you could say I worked uh, more than the average college student, but I loved it. I loved every second of it. I loved bartending for a lot of reasons. One day I was working uh, at the bar and I got to meet this really cute girl who had come in quite a bit. And she had a group of friends that she would sit with. And I had seen her, but I finally got introduced to her. And one night she said, you know, maybe you should hang out and not work one night. So I did, I, I took the night off and spent it with her and the group of people and uh, it was really nice getting to know her. And then we started really dating. That girl was Jenna and I'm so lucky to have met her. She's such an incredible person. And it was pretty crazy how she had flown all, all the way across the United States to go into the bar that I worked at. When we started dating, she, uh, had showed me you know her work and I had gone places with her you know I'd gone to Ireland with her uh, I worked uh, security for her when we went to Ireland together she really just kind of opened my eyes to the whole world of YouTube which I thought was so intriguing and I had not really seen it before a little later on I got really into Olympic weightlifting which I felt like was a great thing for me because I had finally found a way to channel my competitive energy in and uh, I started training a lot at Olympic weightlifting and this past summer, I finally decided I wanted to compete, and so I did, and I was really happy I did. I got third place at the tournament, and I was really happy to get back into that environment of competing. Anyway, uh, Jenna's two dogs, Kermit and Marbles, I had fallen so deeply in love with Kermit. He's just such a sweetheart, and I told myself I wanted to get a dog as soon as I graduated college. I didn't want to get a dog before graduating. Spent so much time with Kermit, I just realized that's the kind of dog I want. So I waited. I really waited until I graduated and once I finally got that diploma, I got my own Italian Greyhound and as you guys have now met her, her name is Peach and I am so happy with her. Uh, she's my new life partner. She's you know, just mine and she she's part of our wolf pack. Now I guess uh, that's where I am. I'm with Jenna. I have this pack of dogs, this little family we've created and I don't really know what's going to happen in the future. I know I know I have a passion for radio and working where I work and, I, and I'm also really intrigued by making YouTube videos and helping Jenna with hers. I really don't know what's going to happen in the future but I do know that um, I'm happy with the direction I'm headed in. I hope you guys enjoyed hearing about my life. Thank you for watching.